Second problem is that Iraq has never been a nation before 1920. Before 1920, it was governed as part of the Ottoman Empire in three regions, a Kurdish region, a Sunni, in effect a Sunni region, and a Shiite region by different governors. The third is that these various, and the Kurdish region, that these various groups have an enormous sense of their identity. And the fourth is that they're split among each other, within each other. So that last weekend you had a battle between uh, two Shiite groups in uh, the southern part of Iraq. So a solution will have to have a military component, a political component, and something that has not yet been really addressed, an international component. Because whatever emerges in Iraq will have to get some sort of international recognition. Now, I'm not going to stand here and pretend that I have the answer to all of these uh, issues. But I do say that we as a nation will go, have to consider the consequences of unwise decisions. Because this is not a problem that will end locally. Because as I said earlier, the people who are contributing or producing this turmoil have a global perspective so that the consequences will spread. Now the main point I want to make here is after our election, we are going to need a serious national debate on where we should go in this respect. And I am sure that the administration is going to play a major, make a major contribution to this, as will others, like various commissions. And this gets me back to where I started. I've by now lived so long that history repeats itself in my own lifetime. <laughs> I've uh, I've seen some of these debates when I was responsible for part of the management of, of the crisis. And now some of the same debates are starting again. And the major thought I want to leave you with is President Ford made many important contributions. But there's no contribution he made that was more important than the fact that he enabled Americans to trust each other again. And that whatever the disagreements were, I never heard him say a malicious word about his opponents. And amazingly, given the mood in Washington, I can't think of any malicious words that were said about him as a person. So this is the spirit that I hope will, will animate us. We are in a period of great complexity. but. It's also a period in which unbelievable changes have taken place. When I first came to China in 1971, if anyone had described to me what China looks like today, I would have thought they were mad. Uh, 
So you have China and India emerging as major features. You have Japan returning into a more national direction. You have a global economic system, but a national political system. So we have huge tasks uh, before us. And uh, <clears throat> on the whole, the opportunities for creating a world order are as great than the dangers, and we have to make them greater. I have a Chinese acquaintance who claims that it's the following Chinese proverb. I say claims because I'm not sure there are as many proverbs as they tell us. I think they make them up as they go along. <laughs> but that proverb is supposed to go like this. When there is turmoil under the heavens, little problems are dealt as if they were big problems. And big problems are dealt with at all. When there is order under the heavens, big problems are reduced to little problems. And little problems should not obsess us. That's the real challenge of our period. And that's what we should keep in mind when we go through the headlines of the day. That the world is in change. That you cannot fix everything at the same time. But you can move it in a beneficial direction. And let me close this with a word of Winston Churchill. He once said, sometimes it isn't enough to do your best. It's crucial to do what's necessary. And that's what we face today. That's what I have to try to describe to you. And that's what President Ford did when he took over as President of the United States in a crisis unexpectedly and under circumstances which seemed extremely difficult then too. So let me stop here and take some questions. Thank you very much. If you have more questions, feel free to note them and pass them to our staff, and we'll handle as many as Dr. Kissinger will indulge. We have some historical ones that are quite interesting, but I'll start with a couple of current ones. Thank you. What is your assessment of the current state of our relationship with Russia? Has our interest in fostering freedom there turned President Putin against us? Uh. That's a very good question. Uh, in order to assess uh, Russian uh, policy, one has to look at Russian history. Here is a country whose defining characteristic through most of its history has been a kind of imperialism. Uh, Russia at all times in its modern, in its history since the 17th century, has been expanding in all directions, into Europe, into Asia, into Central Asia. 